the chair as if, as if like there was an earthquake going on. And the wife of the pastor started to be. They understood the message. Something is going on in the church. There is a huge dead tree in the middle of the altar. It is not a physical tree. Not like this, no. It represents something in the spirits. Someone is there that has no life, but is so significant in the church because it is at the middle and prevents everyone from getting a breakthrough in their worship. And you know what is beautiful with this? They don't know me. I don't know them. And I totally get my right. The Lord revealed this vision to you. You are familiar with this. And the huge fear fell on our eyes. Connection. And I told the lady at my left, I said, You are a leader in your church. Your standard is up to here. But because of this issue of a dead tree, you try to move down because of your compassion for the members of the church. But the Lord is saying to you today, Go back to your own place. Because that's where you belong. And I told the pastor, the ball is on your court. Make a decision. Talk to your husband. Address that dead tree. Follow the principle of the yeast. If the dead tree represents a problematic personality, that person has to be cut off from the church. But that person has so much influence to everyone because the vision shows that as they try to approach it, the entire church was shaken. They are fighting for their survival. Influential people, money people, people that has a voice in the church, people that has been there for so long, that tree represents that. And I said, you're dismissed. And they said, five minutes, it feels like it's five hours. God has spoken. That's how it feels. Very short. Right on to the dot. The Lord did not spin them around. They left the building. Their, their problem is solved. They know what to do. When the Lord reveals something like this, God is going to prepare you that when shaking comes, you will not be surprised. It will not come to you like in a right punch that you will be knocked out completely. You can at least prepare yourself. You know, I, I'm so sorry for the wife of the pastor. She was, a, she was a mess. She understood something. And I said, we will see each other a few years from now. You tell me what happened. I'll give you time to heal. I'm not going to force myself. I'll give you time to heal process. It's beautiful to meet again once you are fully recovered, restored. And you tell me the story. If you are a prophetic person and the prophetic words that you are released, that you release are constantly off, say with me, ouch. ouch. You love to prophesy, but every time you prophesy, it's off. When people hear you, parang suka, they want to spit it out. It's constantly off. The solution, get a lot of healing and deliverance. Everyone say thank you. Get a lot of healing and deliverance. You know why it's off? You are wounded. You will not hear the voice of God. Your own woundedness and brokenness is what's coming out of your mouth. You know prophetic words that you will feel worse than better after the person is done. Prophetic words that make you feel like cursing the person after it was done. That, that's terrible. You need to watch out what's coming out of you. It's coming out because it is there. Get a lot of healing and deliverance. I'm not going to accuse you of anything false. You're too 
young to be accused as a false prophet. If you, if, if it is your first time to prophesy, and someone accuses you as a false prophet, that is really funny. I'll tell you why. Because before you will be accused as a false prophet, you need to become a true prophet first. You need to reach a certain level of acceptance in the body. Then one day you become false. For whatever reason, character issue, you become constantly off because of your own woundedness. Then someone just prophesied and it was off and you accuse him of a false prophet. If you analyze what I say, it is more of an honor actually. Because you are putting a person already to a place of elevation when they are not there yet. You are not in that level. You are just a rookie trying hard to prophesy. <laughs> Question that I have heard floating around. Because we saw the prophet blowing the wind. If we are a prophetic person, do we need to blow the wind? Not really. You may want to whistle. Whistling is also in the book of Isaiah. Because the prophet loves to slap. Do I need to slap? Not really. You might want to spank. Those are personalities. Those are prophetic expressions. Jesus took a man, put it in the eyes of the blind. The blind see. Joven tried to do it with someone who has cut around. Put a man, and the Bible said you have to spit on a man. I'm telling you, she's gonna slap you at your face. It's the end of your prophetic ministry. The Lord will tell you what to do. Get the anointing. Do not copy the personality. In the unity movement, 
Avenue area is not moving forward with me. There was a time that the unity movement was in a, in a projectile momentum, but they stopped for whatever reason in fighting civil war in the camp, gossip in the camp, sexual sin, pornography in the camp. If the unity movement is not moving forward with God, or they are shutting the doors for the apostles, prophets, and prophetic voices, start a small network of those that are willing to move with the Holy Spirit. Start with a small network, and then follow the principle of the days of small things. Say with me, days of small things. Days of small things. That's in Zechariah. You don't have to despise humble beginnings. You don't have to despise the days of small things. Because sometimes people get stories. I have heard stories. Oh, a long time ago, Ilo Ilo was so busy. And then for the longest time, it was so quiet. Because your forerunner gets tired. They get tired. They have lives to live. And there was no Joshua generation that follows up the mantle of the Moses. And the Joshua generation, they're busy for the KK. So one whole generation was missed. I really believe that Ilo missed one half generation. One generation was 40 years. One half is 20 years. There is mega silence at Ilo City for like 17 years. Like one half of the generation was missed. There was not just one generation. That took over what the Moses generation had left off. Then, judge prophecy. Say with me, judge prophecy. Judge prophecy. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not treat it with contempt. You can judge a prophetic word, but do not treat it with contempt. You evaluate the word. Read the prophetic word and reread it again, whatever you have received. Review them once in a while, especially if the prophetic word is not now words. You get that? Whatever word that you have received, judge it, evaluate it, read it, hear it over and over again if it is recorded. And identify if it is getting fulfilled. There is a difference between judging the prophecy and judging the prophets. The confused will judge the prophets, but the thought will judge the prophecy. You see the difference? Judge the prophecy, read it, review it, and we read it over and over again. Next, pray through every prophetic word that you have received, either in this personal for your church city or country pray it through whatever you have received some of that you understand some of those you don't some of that you interpret wrong pray it through allow the spirit of God to open the eyes of your spirit and your mind and you ask the Lord God is there more to what I have received is there more that I need to know what is the preparation that I have to make here is sister Lord let's stand up for a second this is a good testimony. I have prophesied to her maybe like three years ago, or maybe more than that. I saw her traveling. What I did not realize, that I would be connected to the very prophetic word that I released to her. Can you imagine that? I was the one that got used to prophesy, and I was connected to that prophetic word. I saw her traveling. I saw her with luggages. In fact, I saw her in a vision where, where there is a map underneath her feet. So she is going to travel. She started traveling with me in Hong Kong. She's going to travel with me in Singapore. Because she has a word, because she has a word, she prepared. She started to accumulate clothes. She bought a lot of clothes. So when we travel to Hong Kong, I look at her. I said, when I look at you, it looks like you also came from the United States. All your clothes are all imported. And she said to me, no, I bought that from Okai Okai. <laughs> Because she received a prophetic word three years ago. Every time there is an ukai ukai bargain, she was there and tried to find the best clothes because the prophetic word was telling her to travel the world. When it got fulfilled, she was ready. The dress are all set. She was wearing a hat that she looks like Britney Spears. She was wearing shoes that she looks like Lindsay Lohan. I am telling you, I said, I am learning something from you. Carry an open mind.
mind and spirit be coachable. There is no end to learning. There is no end to learning. The knowledge of God will prevent you from being destroyed. So he does say, you know, I was also perfected 20 years ago. What happened between then and now? And he said, I stopped. Why? I stopped it because I was accused as false. You were wounded. If you are going to stop because of the accusation, don't. People will always accuse you of something. People will say, I don't like the way your, your care looks like. 